I come from a background where I was expected to do things myself. I was raised very independent. I love my parents. They raised me really well, made me strong. But you know what? Sometimes I can be a little bit stubborn. I don't want to hear my husband say anything up here from the platform. Uh, <laughs> and it's like, no, I'll do it myself. I see that hand, even though you didn't raise it. <laughs> and there are times that God says, yeah, do it yourself. But there's other times that God says, be willing to let down your wall of pride and let other people in to help. Come on, if you haven't gotten free by yourself, help, have somebody else help get you free. Amen? There is power in connection. Equally, there is peril in disconnection. There's peril in disconnection. The enemy works hard to disconnect the generations. And um, if you can go to the, the one that says peril of disconnection. Look at that. It's unplugged. Okay, go to the next screen because I want to show you this. Look at what the enemy did. He disconnected David and Absalom. He disconnected Eli and his sons because Eli didn't teach his sons righteousness and that's why God had to raise up a Samuel and Gideon you know we love to talk about Gideon the sword of the Lord and Gideon but watch what happened with Gideon Gideon won tremendous victory over his enemies he crushed the Midianites he brought Israel into a time of tremendous victory and in that time of tremendous victory, they captured Zeba and Zalmunna, who were the, the uh, Amorite kings. And he brought the Amorite kings up before the people, and he put a sword in the hand of Jether, who was his firstborn son. Now, he had 70 sons. I don't want to talk about that, okay? He had 70 sons. No man should have 70 sons, okay? He had 70 sons, and Jether was the oldest. And he put a sword in his hand, but, and he told Jether to kill the enemy. Now, he, the enemy was served up on a plate, but he was trying to teach his son victory. He was trying to teach his son the enforcement of that victory. And he served the enemy up and said, take him out. And it says Jether would not do it because he was afraid that he was a youth. And so Gideon arose, took the sword, and instead killed Zeba and Zalmunna. Doesn't that sound like a thing a parent would do? But let me tell you what he didn't do. He never taught his children how to fight. And so the second that Gideon, great, mighty Gideon, mighty man of valor Gideon, the second Gideon was off the scenes, one of his um, sons by a concubine, rose up and killed all 70 of Gideon's children in a day. Because Gideon never taught his sons how to fight. Parents, listen to me. There are times that we fight our kids' battles. And we gladly do it. But there comes a point where we also have to fight with, with them. I don't mean like against them, but I mean with them. We fight alongside them so that they learn how to fight spiritual battles. If we're fighting all their battles for them, they're going to end up like Jether's kids. But when we, when we bring them alongside and we teach them spiritual warfare, we teach them the principles of the word, they teach them all the stuff that we've been studying and that we've been doing for these last several decades, and we teach our kids how to do that, then when they're faced with the battle, when they're faced with somebody rising up against them, they're going to know what to do, and they're going to say, it's my time to fight. But if we don't teach our children... And if we're always the ones that are fighting the battles for our adult children, the enemy will come when we're not looking and take them out. The peril of generational disconnection. The enemy knows it. That's why he fights so hard for it. But let me just close this by saying that there is a, a promise of generational synergy. 
let me just show you this progression. When I was coming up, the enemy's target was on college age kids, 20s, maybe early 30s. They're the ones that got swept into the drug life and the, you know, sexual revolution and rebellion and all that. Okay, that's, that's what was, but just about a decade later, it was in all the high schools. The drug culture, the, the focus was on our high schools. Then the next decade, it went to the middle schools. And all the middle school kids were being faced with stuff. And today, we find ourselves in a place where we're having to say, how did we get here when they're bringing drag queens in to read storybook hour to kindergartners? How did we get here? The church was silent. And we didn't recognize the enemy's plan and the enemy's plots. The enemy's after the minds of your kids, so let me just say, we've got to be after their minds even more. Because there's reformers and revivalists in our kids. I'm telling you, some of the kids that you saw dancing up here today, some of the kids that were worshiping down front, man, I could go lay hands on them and just prophesy over them because they've got anointing on their life. They're reformers. They're revivalists. They're healers. They're prophets. Not they're going to be. They are. They're called to be that. They're called to walk in that. They're called to exemplify that. We need to be diligent as, as parents and the older generation to watch over them. The promise of generational synergy. Let me just help, let me just remind you. When David killed Goliath, David married the king's daughter. But did you know that David's family got to quit paying taxes? So when the younger generation breaks through, it's also a breakthrough for the older generation. When Mordecai was the one that came to Esther... And she didn't want to take her place. He said, listen, if you don't take your place, God will raise up somebody else. But who knows if you come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Esther's response was, if I perish, I perish. See, she was ready to fight. She was ready to take on the battle that was before her. She was ready to fight. Some of these kids over here, they're ready to do those kinds of battles. They're willing to stand up and say, you know what? If I perish, I perish, but I'm going to obey what God says to me. I'm going to do what God says even if it hurts. They're champions. These kids over here, they're champions. But when Esther had that scepter of favor extended to her, and when Esther saw the overthrow of Haman and the breaking of that decree, I want you to know what happened next is that Mordecai ended up getting promoted, and Mordecai and Esther came together in generational synergy, and they wrote the laws that were on the books in ancient Persia, a wicked, idolatrous, pagan land. One generation tag-teaming, but then turning around and joining together and saying, together we're stronger. And so I want us to do something together. We're going we're gonna, to um, have Bishop Hammond. I'm going to actually, actually ask somebody to just run this mic back to him because he's in the back. But I'm going to ask Bishop Hammond to speak a father's blessing over us. Father, we thank you for the you being our heavenly Father. Let's stand. And, Let's stand, yeah. And we can be fathers on the earth. And Lord, I sense there's several men and women out here that didn't really have a father that could bless them and didn't have the Father's blessing. So I release the Father's blessing upon each and every one, especially those that didn't have fathers that blessed them and didn't teach them the ways of the Lord and didn't show love and honor to them. So, Lord, I bless them right now with the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Bless them, Lord, to know that you love them. You have a plan and purpose for them, and you're going to bring them forth into their destiny. We release destiny to be fulfilled for each one 
right now, Lord, and we release the grace, supernatural divine enablement that will enable each one to fulfill. And everyone that our fathers and mothers will be the right type of fathers and mothers to their children and to their grandchildren and great-grandchildren. And we just decree your blessing upon each and every one that's under the sound of our voice this day. In Jesus' name, everybody said, Amen. Amen.